May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Will you please be seated? As always, it's good to see you here this morning, and uh, if you uh, missed Kathy Bentley this morning, you've got one more, one more Sunday to, to catch what she has to say uh, about the third feast next week. What she touched on very, very quickly uh, is something that I think is, is apropos to why we do what we do, why we gather for Sunday worship and why we uh, read our Bibles and things like that. She, she touched on the Feast of uh, First Fruits today, and basically how after we come to salvation, I'll say it in just a sound bite, how we, after we come to salvation, the rest of God's work in our life is really, I'll use the term sanctification, uh, getting, rid of, getting rid of the sin, getting rid of our, our self-centeredness and our fleshly attitudes, that we continue to have even after we receive the good news of God in Christ. You know, in a way, that's the same thing that, 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 that we're after in the life of the church. And that's a, kind of one of the things that we hope to accomplish at least a little bit. Every time we, we gather for worship, every time we receive communion, every time we hear the word uh, read or we read it ourselves, we take time to... To, to meditate on the Word of God, we look for that sanctification process uh, to continue. And that's even in a way the, the, the liturgical seasons uh, that we have are towards that end as well. You know, we're in that season of Epiphany, as I'm sure everybody knows. And I'm sure probably everybody remembers that the word Epiphany means manifest or to show or to reveal or for, for God showing himself to the world. And that's kind of where our scriptures take us, uh, for the most part, in the season of Epiphany, is how God has revealed himself. Old Testament, New Testament, uh, and then we learn from that and apply. In Isaiah chapter 49, we had one of the, the so-called servant songs, but it's a, it was a passage about... Well, to a certain degree, it was applied to Isaiah, uh, but to a certain degree, he was forthtelling about what we now know, looking back, Jesus, the servant, the servant who will reveal God, not only to Israel, but even to the nations. Verse 3 in that passage said, You are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Now, how do you get glorified unless you're revealed? And so, and the other passages in there as well. Go back and read that, and you'll see that. And of course, we know Jesus was the one that fully fulfilled that servant uh, song. And we come up here to the, the gospel reading, the Gospel of John, where we also hear about John the Baptist. Uh, two Johns to keep in mind there. And we hear these, these proclamations. Not only the proclamation by John the Baptist. I'll come back to this in a minute, but twice he said, Behold the Lamb of God. I'll come back to that in a minute, but, but also the fact that John, the gospel writer, recorded all these things. It's all a way to reveal God proclamations about, about Jesus. And then we move to Paul's letter, 1 Corinthians, the introduction, where he made some references to things that if we watch how he develops them later on in the letter, which we're not going to do this morning, but he says this in writing to the Corinthians. He says, you were enriched in him, that is in Jesus, you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. In a way, we can hear in that 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 knowledge and that spiritual gifts that he talks about are a way for God, through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, to be manifest. And then verse 9, he said, God is, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And so that fellowship of the faithful community, the church, is another way for, uh, for God to manifest himself. He did it back then. He does it now, today. And then, of course, 
Psalm 40, uh, that great psalm. Let me read just, just the way that ended, verses 8 through 10, ended this way. Where is it? It's on this page over here. I delight to do your will, O my God, your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. The psalmist shared how he he talked about the love of God. And that's, again, another way that uh, God is manifest in the world as we just talk to him. It's, all of these scriptures are ways that God shows himself, reveals himself, not only to the body of the faithful, but also to those who are outside of the body, outside of the church. But let me just touch uh, very briefly on a, a couple of, of these items that is in John's Gospel, the first chapter. I already mentioned how Two times he uses the phrase, Behold the Lamb of God. That's the only two times in the New Testament that shows up. But the first time he adds to it, Who takes away the sin of the world. You know, this is the first time in John's Gospel, early in the the Gospel for sure, but this is the first time that John the Baptist, or John the Apostle writer, talks about about Jesus, and and Jesus actually shows up. This is the first time. Yeah, John the Baptist had made some reference to him. I've got a. Uh, I'm not even worthy to un- uh, untie his sandals. But when actually Jesus shows up, the very first thing he says, "Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world." Kind of, it sets the stage, <coughs> sets the tone from John's perspective as to what is the the primary purpose of Jesus being here in the first place. A sacrifice. Not just somebody who comes and shares with us a some truths that might help us live better. For sure the fact that we need a sacrifice for us is a truth that we all need to hear. But it's so much uh, it's so much more than just uh, attitudes about life and the way to deal with things as they come. First and foremost, he is a sacrifice, an innocent individual offering himself for the benefit of others. Takes away the sin of the world. In a way, it's a, uh, a recipe, if you will, for deliverance, deliverance from sin. One might wonder where, where John the Baptist got that from. You know, the fact that, that that phrase, the Lamb of God, I'm sure different images and things come to our minds, but uh, uh, maybe the Passover Lamb, but actually that one, if you read the scriptures associated with that one, it doesn't really, in a sense, deliver from sin. You know, it takes away the sin of the world, but it does address it in some way.